Bill Al Houcher, yeah. a huge name. Like really, he's been around the Sydney scene um, for two decades and he's only 36. <laughs> you know, he's kind of burst on there in his 20s. Now, he left the country under bizarre circumstances. 2018, he pled guilty to accessory after the fact for a shooting, a fatal shooting. Now, he was put on a, on basically on a good behaviour bond, but cops, they knew, they considered him one of the most dangerous men in Sydney at the time. Yep. So they quickly applied for like an extensive uh, supervision order. You know how that is so they can put a bracelet on him and monitor him. And they've gone to the court to get that done. But Bilal left the country beforehand. And that, I remember you've obviously been, as you said, Bilal Houch has been around for years and you've written, I don't know how many dozens of stories about him. And I had to catch up, do a bit of catch up. Yeah. It was before my time and I read your story about it and I think you broke that one, didn't you? That Bill Old Houcher had gone overseas and you kind of put him on the map as being this big name who had got out of town so before the police could get him. Went over to Dubai and he, he in, was well known and he caught up with um, Mark Buttle. Yeah. Um, well, because, because yes. Bill Old Houcher, as you said, this is a guy who had been on the, on the streets and on the scene since he was a teenager. Yeah. And then as he rose up through the through the ranks, he was there alongside guys like Mark Buttle and then eventually had guys under him doing an apprenticeship almost under him, like the Almadine crime clan, who right. have been involved in, you know, Sydney's underworld war with the Hamseys and these are some of the families that we've talked about in recent years. And the Houches aren't one that we've spoken about a lot, but they're a massive deal, aren't they? They are one of the supreme crime families in this city. And that's why what we talk about coming up is massive, that the police, you could hear the excitement and voice of some senior police when they were saying, we are making big arrests and we're going to allege we've taken down the Houcher Crime Syndicate. Now, one guy said to me, he said, no one really in Sydney understands how big this is. He said, I think he's blaming us for basically saying everybody thinks about the Almadines and the Hamseys. Yeah. In the background, the Houchers are massive and there's some other families yeah. that maybe I think later on we should talk about. But Houcher, do not underestimate the significance of the arrests that we're going to t that we talk about yeah. and the detaining of Bill Al Houcher in Lebanon, even though he's not going to be in for very long. And in fact, it's probably out while we're talking now <laughs> um, but because he has that much power. Why is Bill Al Houcher such a big deal? You spoke about the fact that he pleaded guilty to accessory after the fact to a shooting or a murder or something um, back in the day, but that's you know that's a not a crime that you'd want to be you or I would want to be charged and convicted of, but it's probably not enough for police to mark him down as being you know one of the biggest players in Sydney's underworld. So what else do they think he's done? I think that they want to talk to him over a number of murders uh, before he left the country. As I said, he was. Uh, known as a guy that was willing to do anything, you know. They have a guy in Melbourne who got killed called uh, Mr. Capable, because he was capable of anything, I think. Bill Al, I've, I've had police officers say, probably one of the most dangerous men this city has seen uh, when he was here. And they think his influence has still been extensive in Sydney to this day. That's a bit of the backstory of Bill Al Houcher. I love the fact that at one point you were getting emails. Were they from him or from someone in his group sending you photos of him the one in with Lebanon? The, the, one, the most, as I said, it's almost iconic now, Bill Al with two machine guns. Yeah. That came, that came from somebody who just said, I think you'll be interested in this. Mark. Okay. I was going to say, I, I didn't think he would be emailing you. No. Um, <laughs> And I, I, somebody who may know some, his associate said he was pretty unhappy where he believed he knew where that came from. Yeah, right. Then there was another photo of him looking really. He's sitting there at dinner. Yeah. And like, this guy's having a really good life over there, you know? Well, I got a photo sent to me by I don't know who recently. And this is the kind of thing, isn't it? Every now and then. Yes. And yeah. I said it last week on the show, you know, if you've, if you've ever got anything, feel free to, to send it to us on email. But, you know, I got this photo of him sitting next to a bloke uh, called Muhammad Ar Nut who had gone over to Lebanon and there was a photo of them at a, at a nice dinner. So people are, are happy to share photos of him living the life in Lebanon, but it all came, well, I was gonna say it all came crashing down. It didn't quite come crashing come down, but it was definitely a big week for Bill Al Houcher last week. And his family. Yes. So as I said, the family is a lot bigger 
in in the Sydney crime scene than has ever been given credit. Yeah, a lot of that has been you know that gloss has been taken by the Alamedines and the Hamseys because of the war that they've been been involved in. The fact that you had uh, Michael Ibrahim and Sam Ibrahim who had such high profiles, put the Ibrahim family on the map. And they were in conflict with the Houches, weren't they? Yeah, or big time. The Ibrahims you know? and Houches? Yeah. So last week on Monday, I got a call from a bloke who said, it's really weird. I've heard that Ned Houch, or Bill Houch's brother, has been arrested, but it's not on the Telegraph. He said, I assume if it's <laughs> happened, it would be on the Telegraph. I said, oh, well, it can't have happened if it's not, if it's not on yeah. our website. Um, but I made a few calls and funnily enough, it had happened. It had just hadn't come through to us yet. So I called up the police and said, hey, you know, have you picked up Bilal Houch's brother? And they said, how do you know about that? And they said, please don't write about it. Yeah. You can't. You can't tell you why, but please don't write about it. But we had an inkling, didn't we? We'd heard that there was some things, you know, on the, on the grapevine, yeah. there might be some things yeah. happening. As I said, I rang up a guy and he said, don't go out this week. Don't go out drinking. Hey, don't no. go out. You've got to be fresh in the fresh morning. Fresh every morning. Just in case. And then Wednesday morning it all happened. Yeah. So we were up early. We kind of figured that it couldn't be far away. So I remember both of us were up by six. And, and there was whispers like, like, I couldn't sleep Tuesday night. There was whispers. We were thinking, is it going to be tomorrow or Thursday? We really didn't know. No. So, and then it began to come through from, you know, every man and his dog. dog. There'd been 28 arrests, 27 or 28 arrests in Sydney. Having 20 gun seized. 20 gun seized, tons of drugs, um, including precursor chemicals, which they used to make drugs, cash by the, by the bundle. Yep. Um, and then all these individuals locked up. And so that was big. And then there was talk that, okay, well, hang on, we're going to try and... New South Wales Police Force had been running an investigation for a, the best part of a year. But the biggest part of that investigation was what they were hoping would happen overseas, which was that Lebanese law enforcement would carry out some raids and arrests of figures from Sydney who were living over there, including Bill Al Houcher, who I think we kind of thought, oh yeah, good one. That, yeah, that'll yeah. happen, right? I mean, Le Lebanon's a country that haven't I'm... had a president for a year. They literally don't wow. have a leader. I didn't know you were an expert in international affairs as well. You don't know half the things I'm an expert <laughs> <laughs> um, right. and And, you know, also also because of that, it's one of these countries where a bloke like Bill Alhoucher has managed to live there for however long, yeah, five years or whatever five it is. Years. Well, that, and he goes, he, early on he was Dubai and other places. Yeah, yeah, but with a dual citizenship, knowing he, he would never be extradited. So we thought, okay, well, what are the chances that they would actually but, arrest him? But then... They did, and, and New South Wales Police well, got a phone call from someone telling them that Bilal Houcher had been detained. Who was that person that called them? That was me. 